Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we got the 95 Bonneville. It's got the big blown 3.8 in it and the airbag light is on and it won't pass the Pennsylvania State Inspection with that light on. So it's our job to figure out what's going on. Right, so she has an older Bonnie. It's got the OBD2 connector uh, but it's not you know OBD2 compliant so the uh, virus here is the best tool for the job. Likes these older GMs typically. Um, so I'll go through and I'll select our information, see what we have for codes. So here we go, just make sure that we can, make sure it's hooked up good here, make sure we can talk to the old girl. Alright, got some cruise control code there in the engine, but apparently we can Talk to us. We got a good link here um, on the airbag. Display codes. No communication. All right. Let's try to just try to display some data here. No communication. Well, at least she's consistent. <laughs> Uh, just for the heck of it, let's just try talking to ABS. Sometimes these older GMs can be a little fussy on your scan tools. Alright. So we can talk to the ABS, talk to the engine. Training should be the same module here. Alright, so looks like we can talk to that. We cannot, for some reason, talk to the airbag module. I grabbed us a wire diagram here. Um, all they have is the color diagrams on these ones. But it looks like we have three fuses associated with it. So here's the, they consider the sensing diagnostic module, so your airbag module. So it's below the right front seat. So before we get too excited, we'll do some quick uh, uh, visual inspection. See if there's anything jammed under the seat. Maybe knock the connector off or something like that. Uh, then we've got ignition power there. Crank and start. So yeah, they send the crank fuse there for some reason, so they know it's in the crank position. So it's hot and run bulb tester start. And the hot and run bulb tester start. So it looks like, but well, that one runs our instrument cluster airbag indicator too. So we know that fuse is good. Uh, let's see. So we got one D, one A, and one C. So I say we just grab the test light. Because we don't want to get burned by the missing fuse, <laughs> or blown fuse, but uh, we'll see that. I guess we'll start with that, if this module's easy enough to get to. Uh, check powers, grounds. I did look at uh, data lines here to see. So it looks like on this pin 9. So the same data line runs PCM. Uh, remote accessory control module equipped, HVAC module, and the EBCM for the brakes. Um, which we could talk to those other modules so we know, you know the wire up to the data link's good, but uh, I don't know if there's any data on the PCM about the, you know, because I know they talk back and forth, but I don't know if the PCM displays any any data, you know, pertaining to the airbag. I doubt it. Oops. Might be worth just a glance. Ah, dang, I keep getting click happy here. Data display because these these older ones. This was like OBD1 data. I think it's just going to be engine engine business. Not worth a look. We're right here anyway. Yeah, cruise control, prom ID, the old quad driver mod. Man, I haven't seen this old stuff in forever. Cruise bad vehicle anti theft yeah so no nothing there it's going to be of any any use to us I guess we'll just approach this like we normally would um, then if it comes down to it we'll go to the module check for powers and grounds of the module and check the com lines make sure it's talking there I wish I had a factory diagram so I could see if there was a you know a comb in the system that we could pull out there probably is but. Anyhow, 
This is a different data bus here. I think this is UART. I'm not 100% positive, but anyhow, let's go check these three fuses first. Let's get, let get the ground here on something. That parking brake bracket right here. Well, I see some uh, some scotch locks here on some brown wires. That's interesting. Very interesting. We'll have to keep that in mind. I don't know where they go. I don't know if it's got a remote start. Yeah, it looks like it does because I see the wire nuts. Oh boy. I hate remote starts. Uh, so we got 1D. Let me just look at my diagram here. Come on, little fella. 1D is hot and run. Bulb tester start. I'd show you the fuse box, but it's a little snug under here. So one D. That one's hot there. That one's hot there. That's supposed to be a 15 amp, right? Yep. Then one A is hot and crank. This is one A. Fuse looks good. That's good on that side. Good on that side. One C, so ten amp. That one there, that one there. So it looks like all of our fuses are good. We ain't gonna make that mistake again. Come back to an empty fuse box. All right. All right so according to information here, it says that our uh, our diagnostic sensing module, our sensing diagnostic module below right front seat. I looked under the right front seat, I don't see anything, so just for the fact that I popped on to Mitchell here, um, and it's saying it's below, let me back back out of here, never know what to believe, some of these older cars, the information is kind of tough on, um, diagnostic energy reserve module below the driver's seat, and then they actually have a picture of it course I looked under the driver's seat and there's a little flap of carpet you can pull up I think I see the top of it but you know short of cutting the carpet you got to pull the seat out of it so <sighs> so being that we do not have an option I don't have the customer's permission to cut the carpet we're gonna have to get the seat out or at least get it back and see that oh that ain't gonna be good is it is this thing got a sunroof too oh boy that's never a good sign when you're standing water on the back seat or on the back floor um, let's set these over here so I don't lose them looks like the wrong side. I'm gonna need a 13 we'll pull them out Belt. That's not good. We're gonna find some crusties, I bet. The torque's bit for that. But it wouldn't be a bad idea before we uh, get messing with that that we unhook the battery. kind of tight in there so I just laid the seat up on the back seat because they are leather I just stuck some cardboard down there that's the only sharp spots on it it balances there pretty well now hopefully there's some of this stuff here hopefully we took out the right 
Let's see, that looks like an airbag model right there. Assembled in Mexico. So, I guess we have to move up some carpet here. That's the only thing I hate about older cars. You want to touch as little plastic as possible. It looks like this whole threshold here it splits right there. It goes all the way to the back. Underneath it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. That's a lot handier. We can just fish it. Oh, there's lots of water. Not to move you guys, you're gonna tip over. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four harnesses and a vacuum line. Or air or something. suck if we took out the wrong seat, right? I don't see any yellow tape. So that has me concerned. Don't go products. Let me just run the number on that sucker. Either case, lots of water. Well, I don't know. Alright. Well, sometimes we just have to learn from our mistakes and keep moving forward. Uh, a little confused, I guess to say the least. I assumed that this had some kind of this. I didn't even take that screw out. The screw was already loose. Uh, I assumed it had some kind of diagnostic energy reserve module and an airbag module. Um, that module, contrary to what Mitchell says, I believe is the uh, suspension control module. <coughs> so that controls. Uh, the air ride. So, I guess with that being said, the carp needs to come out anyways. We're going to dry the carpet out <coughs> or suck all the water out. So, now we're going to pull the passenger seat out. No sense in, uh, you know, crying about it. Just a little bit of wasted time. Uh, let's see, I'll switch this over to this side. Which one moves the seat here? One of these is going to move the seat. No, don't tell me that seat. Oh. Well, that sucks. I think the driver's seat needs to be plugged in in order for the passenger seat to work. I hear the relay clicking, but there's no power being passed over here, so that one connector looks like a jumper. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Life is a mechanic. So the driver's seat does need to be plugged back in to make the passenger seat work. A lot of times the connectors like that will pass, you know, they'll have kind of a jumper in it, you know, power in, power out, goes over here to the other side. <sighs> well, and this guy actually has the factory service manuals on this, and I was looking in that, and you know, like I say, everything talks about this, this DERM, Diagnostic Energy Reserve Module, which not too you know uncommon to be referred to airbag modules so it's got a little sidetracked I guess oh wow hope you folks forgive me it's real life I think it's hey you know ultimately whatever this problem ends up being figure out where the heck all the water is coming from. I assume probably a sunroof drain or something like that. It rained like crazy last night. Hardcore. Flood warnings, the whole spiel. Now we'll go up, tip this seat back and unplug it. Get the seat out. Get this fuse box cover is floating around. Extra kibbles and bits here. This is not stuff that we took out, so make sure we put that back. Everything is 
pretty wet over here too. Push the carpet back here. Pull our harness through. right under here. Ooh. Yuck. Ew. Did I just say ew? Oh, baby. Ooh. Nasty. Probably I'll unhook the battery before we go fit on. Here's another screw. Random screw. Something out here with this stuff. The airbag module is growing some mold. So you got a case of the white crusties. We'll probably go and hook the battery before something shorts out and cause a minor explosion. It smells fresh. Alright, this battery is unhooked. Let me just pull out the little red tab here. Red tab is disengaged. Oh, our connector is clean as a whistle. But the white pus is running right out of the airbag module. Hmm. Proud to take the bolts out. Now we got it unhooked. Take the bolts out of it, lift it up, see what it looks like, but she's pretty crusty. and pus. Something rattling in there. I'm just glad to see that the connector looks absolutely mint. Fortunately they mounted it up high enough that it uh, is not getting the brunt of this but oh, what a mess. It's for certain if they grow crusties on the outside they grow crusties on the inside. So that's the inside cover. There is your circuitry for your airbag. It's a good thing this whole thing didn't uh, make the right contacts. Kaboom! Well, it looks like she's been growing some crusties for a while. So we got to locate a used or a different airbag module. That's going to be the beginning. No sense even checking any wires at this point. I'm pretty sure we found your problem, lady. We're back. Ta-da! We got one that's not crusty. She's a used one. Um, I still need to get a hold of the customer. Well, first we gotta put it in and see if this one works, see if there's any other underlying issues. Um, and we gotta get a hold of the customer to see if they want me to take care of the water mess or what the case is here. So this one has the same uh, service ID number as the one we took out. It's not submerged in water, so I don't feel bad putting it back in. We'll put her in here, we'll get her screwed down. Hook the battery back up. Start the little guy up, see if it uh, cured all the ails it, see if we can talk to the module now anyways. See if there's any other issues.
Well, it went out. Traction off. Well, it must have hit the button, probably. Wherever the thunder it is. Well, that's the buttons on this little guy. So we're back in the airbag. We'll see if it'll pull codes out of it now. Hey, look at that. So now we can talk to it. Alright, so we should be able to read some data on it now. Well, that's good. That was easy. No real diagnosis other than visual. Mission voltage. Okay, so that's a 36 loop reserve, so that is part of the, uh, the Durham Diagnostic Energy Reserve. It supposedly reserves at 36 volts for, I think, up to 10 minutes or something like that. Just getting a little sidetrack there. Lights are off. Engine light, traction light, airbag. Everybody's happy. Well, folks, um, I know this isn't my normal style video. Uh, I did get a little sidetracked. Then I start researching. I want to find out, you know, is this mod or does this vehicle is it supposed to come with this energy reserve module? Is it built into the airbag module? You know, they make brief mention of it even in the factory service info. You know, so I pull the driver's seat, come to find out, you know, that's a module that has to deal with, you know, suspension. Of course, you really couldn't see under the seats generally. The airbag module is under the passenger seat, but what are you going to do? It's a couple more bolts and likely it's going to have to come out anyways to deal with uh, this water issue, wherever it may be coming. I see the headliner and stuff is, you know, looks good in this car, but, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, regardless, um, like I say, I have to get a hold of the customer at this point. Uh, and see if it's something that he wants to deal with, you know, as far as taking it home and getting it dried out. I don't know. It's a mess, that's for sure. Uh, you know, of course, this can get ugly because that'll turn to, you know, mold. I, I gotta believe it's something that's relatively recent simply because it, it really doesn't stink. You know, the inside of the car doesn't stink. I didn't know it was wet until I stuck my hand down in it. So. I don't know, like I say, it did rain like super hard, but obviously it's been getting water in there for a while. You know, I mean, that module didn't just, you know, corrode overnight or in the, you know, past couple weeks or whatever. Uh, it's been growing for a little bit. So I guess I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave it tore apart until I talk to him. So sorry if it was kind of a short diagnosis or if I seem to get sidetracked here. I'll make up for it on the next one. How's that sound? Anyhow, you guys know where to find this. And just from our viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.